Pink Sticks. All right. Well, hello and welcome. Welcome and hello. Today is Thursday, which means that it is vlog day and we got a lot of stuff to cover today. There's going to be a lot of uh, some advocacy stuff, some first impressions. I do have shout outs and beer as well as a retro vaping segment. I'm hoping to get to maybe a few viewer mails at the end, but we'll see how that we'll see how that goes when we get there. Before we get too far into this, let me get out my vlog notes. Uh, my first vlog note says effed up videos. Oh, that's right. So with VaporCon West almost a Upon us. It's going to be July 10th and 11th up in Reno, Nevada. So because of that, uh, my video schedule is going to be all foobard and it's going to be more foobard than when I usually go to vape meets. When I usually go to vape meets, I'm able to get my videos done, go to the vape meet, upload these videos, be back from the vape meet in time for the vlog. It's, it's just going to be all messed up throughout July and that's my own fault because of my event uh, up in Reno. So today is Thursday, July 2nd. This weekend is the 4th of July. Hope you all have a fantastic 4th of July. We do have a Namber Juice uh, 4th of July sale going on. Oh, if you're so interested, you can get the details on our Facebook page. Yes, this weekend is the 4th of July. And so I'm going to be out visiting with some peoples. Anyway, 5th and 6th. So uh, the 6th and 7th, 6th, 7th, and 8th, I'll have my normal review videos. I'll have MechMod Monday, Topper Tuesday, and Wildcard Wednesday. On the 8th, I'm driving, hopefully, up to Sacramento, California to meet up with a bunch of other vapors, including Stefan and Not Blowing Smoke, uh, to speak our disapproval of California SB 140 up in Sacramento at the state capitol. So that's what I'm going to be doing Wednesday. Then Thursday, I'm going to be driving from Sacramento up to Reno. The event is Friday and Saturday. Uh, normally, I would just come home Sunday and we could start the whole thing over. However, my mom's birthday is that week, so I'm going to stay up in Reno an extra three or four days, which means that I won't be able to shoot videos, I won't be able to shoot a vlog that week, so there's not going to be a vlog Ooh, possibly for up to two weeks. This could be the last vlog for two weeks. God, I better make it count. Uh, hopefully, everything will get back to normal the week of the 19th. The, the week after VaporCon is all messed up. Hopefully, things will get back to normal the week after the 19th. There will definitely not be a, blog, a vlog on Thursday the 9th, and there will definitely not be a vlog on Thursday the, uh, the 16th, as I believe the 15th I'm driving back down here. But I might surprise myself. My plans are always just a little bit up in the air. I mean, that's how you travel, right? By the seat of your pants. But I'm very excited for VaporCon. Uh, it's going to be a very, 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 very fun event. But it's just, it's messing up a lot of this month. Week of the 19th, things should be back to normal. Additionally, I say this a lot. I say it all the time. YouTube just keeps marking people's comments as spam. Uh, or someone is. Someone's going through and marking comments as spam. I don't have time to sit and approve every comment that comes in. And so things that are getting marked as spam that shouldn't be spam, I try to fix it. I'm not always the best at it. It's just a thing. It's just a thing that happens and I have no uh, I have no control over that. So if you, if you post a, a comment on one of my videos and nobody replies to you or you don't see your comment there, chances are it got marked by spam by YouTube, uh, marked as spam by YouTube or by, uh, by somebody else. So first thing on the docket after all that nonsense, Calgary, Canada, Jeffrey, uh, I believe on Facebook, sent me this article to the calgarysun.com. Calgary, Canada. And as soon as I opened up this, this webpage, it just smelled like hockey and maple syrup in here. I'm just joking. Of course, that's a, that's, that's a, that's a joke. I should probably stop making fun of Canada. Uh, they're they're fantastic up there. So, uh, this this whole article is about how the uh, about vaping in Calgary. Committee moves toward public ban on those e-cigarettes. We're told you find offensive. So basically, what they did is. I don't know the population of Calgary, Canada. I'm assuming it's a lot, and I'm assuming maybe Google will tell me, maybe Siri will tell me. Siri, what's the population of Calgary, Canada? The population of Calgary is about 1,097,000. 1,097,000 people. Thank you, Siri. So basically what they did to justify this public ban 
Out of the 1 million plus people that live in Calgary, Canada, they put it up an online survey. 561 people took this online survey and said that they found vaping offensive. Million plus people, five, 561 people wouldn't even be a dot, like it wouldn't even be this much. These people are like, oh, vaping's offensive. So they're gonna ban it. Based on this online survey, most people feel uncomfortable close to a person using an e-cigarette. So says the city survey. Most of the people feel uncomfortable with those using a e cigarette, an e-cigarette in all public places except in the street or in the park. Ah, things like this just make me upset. People feel uncomfortable with those using e-cigarettes in all public places except a street or a park. In all public places except a street or a park. Again, in all public places except a street or a park. So if someone's on the sidewalk, using an electronic cigarette, and maybe they're vaping. Maybe they've had a rough day and maybe they need a vape. So they're out there vaping. Someone's gonna be offended and go, get in the street. That's where I feel comfortable you using that. Only in the street or go to the park. You can vape in the park, just not on the sidewalk. This makes, uh, this makes little to no sense to me. 561 Calgarians feel uncomfortable being around or uh, seeing people vaping because they feel uncomfortable seeing someone vape. That's why they're going to ban it in Calgary. This is fucking ridiculous. Uh, Canadians, I don't know, again, what you have up there as far as legislative bodies or activism or anything like that. I'm going to post a link in the description to this article from the Calgary Sun if you're in Canada. Spread it around to your fellow Canadian vapors, vape shops, inform your customers that this is uh, that this is happening. Um, it's ugh, 561 people out of a million. What did Siri say? Oh, I'm getting texted. What did Siri say? Siri said something like 1,900,000 people. 561 of those are causing a vape ban in Calgary, Canada. Oh. I believe that's just, I believe that's just ridiculous. So moving forward, what do I have next in my vlog notes? Beyond Vape customer survey. Okay, okay. I believe we're gonna be able to cover this this week. So I just thought this was really, really interesting. Um, about three weeks ago, Beyond Vape posted on their Instagram uh, they had an online customer survey and then they posted the results on their Instagram and the customer survey said, how long have you been using vapor products? Very, very one, one click answer. The uh, options were zero to three months, three to six months, six to 12 months, one to three years or over three years. These results uh, were really surprising to me. So the zero to three month people, only 5% of the people that took the survey have been vaping zero to three months. I don't know, yeah, I guess zero months would be an option. Like if you just got your kit but you haven't used it yet, you've been vaping zero months. Three to six months was 10%. 10% of the people that took the survey have been vaping three to six months. 26% uh, was the six to 12 month. So getting into that first year, 26% of the vapors that took this survey have been vaping about a year, between six and 12 months. And the last one, or the second to last one, between one and three years was 50%. 50% of the vapors that took this survey have been vaping one to three years. And then this was the surprising part. It seems like it would have just kept going up and up and up, right? No, three plus years of the vapors that took this survey, only 9% of them have been vaping more than three years. Vaping, only 9% of them have been vaping for more than three years. I personally have been vaping for six years and I've been making vape videos just as long, which means there is a world, a whole mountain, a whole slew of people out there who have only been vaping for three years. They won't get to, uh, you know, they, they've missed out on, on so much vaping and so much, I mean, not missed out. Obviously, congratulations. Welcome to the fucking club. It's great over here. It's just, it's just weird because I think about the fact that I've been vaping for six years and that there's a lot of vapors out there that have only been vaping for three years. Um, 
that is the majority. Three years is the majority, and over three years is by far the minority. Only 9% of vapors have been vaping for three years. Let me, or for three plus years, let me know in the comments how long have you been vaping, and especially chime in if it's over three years. I'd be really interested. I know I have a lot of subscribers that have followed me throughout uh, my entire six year journey of vaping. I mean, this dates back to 2009 when I started making vape videos. I still get comments from subscribers who watched all my old videos, who watched the old, you know, stick battery videos, and when I got my first RDA, and when I got my first six volt vape, and you know, all these firsts, literal firsts in the vaping world. Uh, I have subscribers that have seen all of that and and have followed me that entire time, which I just think is fantastic. And it's uh, we got this new three year is the is the is the majority of uh, of vapors. So let's see if this is 2015. A year ago would be 2014. A year before that would be 2013. A year before that would be 2012. So that means 2012 was kind of the big year for vaping, which which is cool which is very very cool i just thought uh, i just thought that was very very interesting um one more thing i wanted to talk more about the sb140 stuff but before i get to that uh squid dude on his youtube channel if you don't know who squid dude is you gotta know who squid dude is i'll post a link in the description to his instagram and his youtube the art of vaping he uploaded a just a phenomenal video i posted a link to it Oh, pardon me. I haven't even been drinking beer today, and I burped. I posted a link to it on GrimGreen.com. I'll post a link to it in the description to this video. It's called Know Your Vape, semicolon, Batteries Debunked, featuring UI Mods. Uh, U, UI Mods? UI Mods. That's what I'm going to say, UI Mods. Lot, loads of really good battery information in this video. It's 21 minutes long. You can sit through the whole thing and learn about batteries and battery safety and generalizations and mistakes that people make and things that people get right. It's just a, uh, it's just a phenomenal video. So shout out to Squid Dude for putting this together and shout out to UI Mods. I'll post links to both of their Instagrams in the description to this video as well as to the to uh, the art of vaping's YouTube channel. So SB140, oh SB140, you are a mess. You are just a mess, 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 mess. People don't. Maybe they do. Maybe people do. This is going. I need a vape. Let me have a vape real fast. I'm gonna do this. So just let's all take a breath. We, we've been doing this for 15 minutes now. Let's just take a breath. Let's have a vape. Delicious. Good God, that's delicious. Okay. Now we can move forward. SP140 is really, really bad. And I'm not saying like really, really bad, like it's a lot of taxes. It's going to end vaping in California. This is how intense it is. This is how extreme it is. Included on this SB140 would make it illegal to vape inside your apartment. And you know what that means. <laughs> no vaping inside your apartment means I would be literally breaking the law right now and broadcasting it on YouTube. That's what would be happening. I would probably do that. I would probably break the law and broadcast it on YouTube, but I don't want to be a criminal. I don't want to feel like a criminal in my own house by vaping in my apartment. It would be illegal to vape in your apartment. The government is now telling residents of California what they can do inside their houses, what they can do inside their apartment, which is ridiculous. I don't know if I would feel comfortable breaking the law and broadcasting it all over, uh, all over YouTube. So here's what we do. Uh, on the 8th, a lot of vapors, there's a bus. There's a bus being sponsored from Southern California up to Sacramento. I'm not sure exactly the times. I have to get with Stefan on this so that I can leave with, in plenty of time to get up to the state capitol in Sacramento. But 
we're going up there. We're going to go up there and we're going to speak our mind regarding SB 140 and obviously that we're uh, staunchly against SB 140. So uh, lovely girl, Lucy. Lucy is just uh, Lucy is just awesome. Um, she sent me an email. She said, uh, here's all the info you need for SB 140. Call your elected officials and tell them you oppose this measure as a voter and a former smoker, also a resident and business owner, if I mean, if that's applicable. Uh, take this info and get it to people to do the same. It's the only way to make any sort of difference. I've provided a copy of the template letter that has been used, but as always, handwritten letters are appreciated. We need volume of communication, as many calls, emails, and drop-ins as possible. I have also included something printable for you from notblowingsmoke.org. Uh, the vote is on July 8th. As much as we can get done by then will be the deciding factor. Find out who your elected official is. And she sent me a link to this fantastic website that I will be posting in the description to this video. You put in your street address. So I'm gonna put in my street address and I'm going to locate my representative. My uh, representative is assembly member Tony G. Adkins. You are a Democrat, State Assembly District 78. I can click on her name and it takes me right to her official website right to her official website fan freaking tastic and then i clicked on email tony it takes me to where i can email her i've sent her at least three or four emails already urging her to vote no on sb 140 telling her my story about how vaping has helped me get away from traditional tobacco products and that passing this sb 140 would be detrimental to public health as well as small business in california if she cared about the residents and the citizens of california she would vote no on sb 140. it couldn't be easier go to this go to this link Type in your address, find your representatives, and email the fuck out of them. You can also you get their uh, email addresses. You can get their telephone numbers. Additionally, if you want to head up to Sacramento with everybody, head up to Sacramento with anybody. Obviously, we need as many people there as, uh, as possible. Email them, call them, stop into their offices if you're nearby, mail your letters to Sacramento. Um, this is fantastic. Uh, I don't exactly know how to get these documents out there. Uh, I'm gonna try to find a way to upload this letter. It's just a copy paste letter that you put your information in. I smoked for X amount of years. I have not had a cigarette in X amount of years because of the success I have found with vapor products. I do not use any electronic cigarettes made by Big Tobacco and I only support small businesses within the vaping community. Good stuff. This is all good stuff, and this website, I can't even tell you, findyourrep.legislature.ca.gov is incredibly helpful for tracking down exactly who you need to tell your story to and to urge them to vote no on SB 140. Thank you, I mean, I can't even, thank you. Let me, let me close this. Why is this still up? You're gonna, yes, sorry. Uh, thank you, thank you, Lucy. You are a wonderful, wonderful person for getting all this information together. So yeah, SB 140. It's really of a downer. We're kind of 20 minutes into this and I just wanted to touch on two more things. This is gonna be loud, I apologize. Nope, okay, I'm just gonna move this so I can lean. I like to lean sometimes and I have a lot of hot white light coming in here and I realize that, but uh, it was something we're gonna move forward. So uh, Jade, I believe she sent me this on Facebook, the EVIC VT, just a quick update on the EVIC VT, some characteristics, sounds in operation. These sounds are very low in volume and can typically only be detected by holding the device to your ear. Remember when we did that? The EVIC VT boosts circuit inductor emits a continuous high frequency buzz. So that's the boost circuit inductor. And the switching system that detects atomizer resistance produces an intermittent ticking noise not unlike that of a quartz watch. These noises are normal and should not be concerned that the device is otherwise functioning normally. When the device goes into standby period, uh, after three minutes uh, without use, or if the power button is pressed five times, all these noises will go away. So evidently, yes, these noises that we're all hearing from our EVIC VTs, remember we heard it? Oh, it's, yeah, well, obviously, 
that's normal. This is all normal operations. These are the this is the these are the boost circuit inductor that we're hearing. Not sure how I feel about the VT right now, if I'm being completely honest. Not sure how I feel about nickel right now, if I'm being completely honest. But we'll get to that. We'll get to that in a future video. Okay, one thing I wanted to do real quick uh, before we get to any beer or shout outs or first impressions, I want to do flying with vape gear updated. A lot of people have been emailing me recently asking about flying with vape gear. Uh, it is simple. It is easy. It is straightforward. Uh, one time due to the deviate mod, I had to uh, unload my bag and show them what everything was. But 99% of the time, I have no problems going through TSA, no problems flying with vape gear. But there's a couple of things that you need to do. If you're taking a mod, let's say that I'm taking this device and I wanna fly with it to Winston-Salem, North Carolina, cause I'm going to Vape Mania. And I decide I'm gonna bring the BMI and this tank in here that we're gonna talk about in the first impressions. Yeah, oh, it's good. It's good, that's why I wanna bring it. What I'm gonna do, obviously, is take this tank off of here because there's no reason to have your tank on your device when you're flying it. You can't vape in the terminals, you can't vape on the plane, you're just not gonna be able to vape. Empty your tanks. Tanks on airplanes flood. They just flood and leak everywhere because of the cabin pressure. Because it's a carry-on, because of the cabin pressure, you're going 10,000, you know, whatever, 30,000 feet in the air and then landing again, yeah, your tank's gonna fucking leak. So, empty your juice. What I like to do is just grab a little portion of toilet paper, wrap my tank in it, and then put it in my little plastic thing. Just like that. But it'll be wrapped in, it'll be wrapped. It'll be wrapped in toilet paper. Done. Perfect. And these little things, I get them from Walmart. They're like $3, and they're just plastic little totes. They happen to fit vape shit perfectly. So, you want to throw some extra drip tips in there. Throw some extra batteries in there. Take the batteries out of your freaking mod. Take the batteries out of your mod. You have no use for them inside your mod. You take your batteries and you put them in here. Or you get one of these little fancy guys like this that holds two 18650 batteries. Yes. And you put your 18650 batteries in this little thing. And this just goes, chuck it straight into your carry-on. No harm, no foul. Just put this in your carry-on. And then, I apologize, this might be loud. You take your mod with no tank and no batteries and you just chuck it in your carry-on. Done. That's it. It could not be easier. Now, if you're bringing tools for rebuilding, you might have a problem. They don't let things like wire cutters <laughs> or scissors or knives of any sort or pokey things through TSA. They just don't. They just won't allow it. So tools you might have a problem with. If you're checking a bag, throw them in your bag, in your checked bag. Batteries and liquids and mods all have to be in your carry-on bag. They can't be checked. TSA recently announced no electronic cigarettes are allowed in checked baggage. It all has to be carried on. But if your batteries are in a little tub like this, little plastic container, done, perfect. Charger, that's easy. You just throw it in your carry-on. Mod goes in your carry-on. Juices need to go into a plastic bag. And TSA only lets you carry on so much liquid. It has to fit in that quart size Ziploc bag. All your liquids have to fit in there. And this is one of the things that really bums me out about flying with vape gear is I'll go to a vape meet uh, like I was just in Winston-Salem, North Carolina or just in Vape Bash and people are like, hey, I wanna give you my whole line of juices. And I'm like, Dude, that is so fucking cool. I won't be able to get that home. TSA gives me one little bag to put like 330 mils in and that's it. Um, I've had juice confiscated from me for not being in the plastic baggie. So you have to, have to, have to put all your bottles of juice in your plastic baggie along with your shaving cream or your toothpaste. These liquids all have to go in a baggie. Why? Because freedom, because America, right? Can you, can you get the sarcasm there? 
All your liquids have to go in a baggie. All your mods without a battery go in your carry-on and your batteries in a plastic container or in something else like this. This is what I do most of the time. Look at that. Done. Snapped up. Batteries are in there. A tank is in there. That's how I would travel with this, uh, without a doubt. And it's easy. They don't give you any trouble. I've never, like I said, apart from that DV8 mod, um, I never had a problem flying with vape gear anywhere. In fact, uh, I have taken things like the uh, like the iStick 30 watt, or the last time I traveled, I took the Evic VT with this tank. Ugh. I took the Evic VT with this tank and just carried it on in my pocket. Like I just threw it in the tub, it went through the metal detector, I grabbed it out, I put it back in my pocket, I got on the plane. And if you're traveling with something like this, oh, that's a good vape. If you're traveling like something like this, take it out of your pocket on the plane, flip it upside down, stick it in the seat back pocket. That way the juice is away from your coils. And when you take off and land, it won't flood the crap out of everything. And then there's a lot of places. Salt Lake City, I believe, uh, has, has a smoking area. Atlanta Airport has a smoking area. So if you happen to have your gear in your pocket, you walk into the smoking area, you blow some clouds, no big deal. So, easy. Easy peasy. We're 28 minutes in right now. We're about a half hour into this. What I want to do right now is beer. All right. Well, let's taste some beer. So tonight's beer is going to be, uh, maybe it's going to kind of be uh, a little bit of a retro beer, I guess. Uh, I haven't had this beer in, it's been well over a year, and I once claimed that this was my favorite beer of all time. I went to one of my local beer places that's kind of just a couple blocks away, and thankfully they have an amazing selection of beer. I ended up spending, eh, 40 bucks on a couple bottles of beer, no big deal. Beer budget hands, right? Beer budget hands. I don't know why I'm trying so hard to tear this price tag off. I just don't want it reminding me of how expensive this bottle of beer was. St. Bernardus ABT12. I did I did once claim that this was my favorite beer of all time and I guess I'm a bit of a slacker because I haven't had it. I haven't had it in over a year. I've been busy drinking other beers, thankfully. Yes, this has a cap with a bottle opener. No corks because fuck corks. Although I did buy a beer today that has a cork. Hopefully, oh. Add a little bit of a head coming out of the top there. Anyway, I'm going to be pouring this Belgian triple into a uh, traditional tulip style Belgian uh, glass. Oh shit, right over the keyboard. As usual, you like that? You like that licking the... I actually got beer on my keyboard. Everybody was waiting for it to happen and it just happened. Pour it right over my keyboard. Get a nice head on there so I can drink through it like a man, as I'm told to do. This is a very, very, uh, this is a very, very dark beer. I can't believe I got, I got beer on my keyboard. Everybody was waiting for it to happen. It just happened. It just, oh, it's down there in the alt key. It's in the alt key right there. Well, hopefully that doesn't uh, cause too much of a problem. So I don't know what I'm going to do about that. So let's move, uh, let's go over to Beer Advocate. And I thought I remembered this having a really high rating on Beer Advocate, and it does. It has a 99% world class, double 99% world class. People say it's the best beer they've ever had. Even people who don't necessarily drink Belgian beers uh, are really into this. I'll post a link, obviously, in the description to the Beer Advocate site, as I often do, as well as to the St. Bernardus.be, that's dot Belgium, B-E, uh, where you can read about it a little bit more. And I learned a while ago that evidently this and the West Veletron 12 are the same recipe of beer. In fact, the West Veletron 12 used to be brewed in this same brewery that these monks run, and when, when they stopped brewing the beer there, the monks in the brewery just went, okay, well, we're going to keep that recipe and call it ABT12, which is why they call it ABT12, West Veletron 12, 12s, 
all over the place. I don't really know what the 12 signifies, but if we're reading off the website, St. Bernardus ABT 12 is a pride of our stable. Stable? This is a classic quad style Belgium Abbey dark ale uh, with a full ivory colored head. It has a fruity aroma full of complex flavors and excels because of its long bittersweet finish with a hoppy bite, 10% ABV. Uh, Worldwide Seed as one of the best beers in the world. It is a very balanced beer with a full-bodied taste and a perfect equilibrium between malty, bitter, and sweet. Good lord, that just sounds good. I'll also post a link in the description to Bevmo where you can, uh, well, I guess you could buy it online. It's about six or seven bucks a bottle, which is... Uh, which is no big deal, that's that's easy to do. Russ from ClickBang, I had to listen to you talk for 30 minutes about fucking shellfish. This beer tasting is for you, sir. Ooh. Oh, it's good. It's more carbonated than I remember it. I don't remember it being quite this effervescent, as some people would say. It's a very carbonated feeling in the mouth. It's good. It's still good. It's still good. It's not I wouldn't say it's my one of my favorite beers. It's it's more it's much more carbonated than I remember. It does have that like Belgian quad sort of uh raisiny molasses, very dark fruit plum notes kind of going on in there. But it is uh it's very effervescent. I would call it carbonated, but it is very effervescent. I'm not tasting this like Miss Ruby Roo taught me. We smell first. That's what we do. We swirl and we smell. Mmm. I honestly don't think I have a juice uh, that would pair with this. Maybe. Maybe this Irish Kiss from Dark Side would pair with it. I got out my Doge again, which I probably have already talked about this in the vlog, but I got out my Doge again. Uh, it's on the Limitless with a District 5 Chuff style cap on there. Mm, that actually does pair really well together. This is supposed to be like an Irish cream flavor, but it tastes like alcoholy, like there's alcohol in it. Hmm. Not bad at all. Not a bad little beer pairing there. So yeah, while I wouldn't say that St. Bernardus ABT 12 is one of my is is my favorite beer of all time it's certainly i would say in my top 10 sometime i'll have to do like my top 10 favorite beers of all time saint bernardus would be firmly in there maybe closer towards the the number five section than the number 10 section it's a very very nice uh example in my opinion of of a belgian quad uh beer it's it's dark and it and it feels it feels heavy, but it still also feels refreshing because of that effervescent uh, that you get from the carbonation. But that's what I got. Let's let's just pour a little bit more. I don't want the beer. I don't want the beer section to get neglected. It's going to be these little six-minute intervals in the, in at the beginning of the vlogs now, and uh, I want people who are watching the vlog to have the chance to to get their beer, to sip their beer. We can do this together as a as a unit, as as some sort of family thing. But uh, here's to you. Here's to my viewers who actually drink beer while they watch the vlog. That's for you. Let's have a sip and a vape together. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. I dig it. I dig it a lot. All right. So yeah, uh, that's it. That's what I got for beer today. So back to the normal vlog. It is shout out time. All right. So let's do some shout outs. What's the what's the first shout out that I have here? This comes from a fella named Charlie. Charlie writes to me and says, "Hey, buddy, I wanted to let you know that we have named our newly adopted cat Grim." I'm usually a dog guy, but my gr girlfriend couldn't help adopt some kittens. Ugh. After searching for vape names, we decided to name him Grim. A close second was Clapton Kitty. Clapton would have been cool. Uh, but we settled on Grim. I've attached a few crappy pics, and I'll send you a better one when I take it. My girl and I will be in Reno for VaporCon West, even though we got laid off. My girl managed to get our flights and hotel covered for my birthday. That's 
awesome. Not that you got laid off. That part sucks. The fact that you got your flights and stuff for VaporCon West, I think, is uh, I think is very very cool. Obviously, thanks for all you do for the vaping community. I'm 15 months tobacco free. Uh, <clears throat> thanks to your videos uh, on some of the first variable wattage devices. Thank you, absolutely, Charlie. Consider you and your girlfriend and your cat Grim shouted out. I think that's uh, I think that's just super cool. I do have another shout out here. Uh, Monica, I apologize. I am too late on this one, but I'll do it anyway. Monica, hey Nick, my fiance and I are getting on ma getting married on July 25th and I've been trying to find the perfect gift for him. He's a huge Grim Green fan and I know he would love to love it if you could sh give him a shout out. He's been vaping for almost two years and he watches the vlog religiously. He's even gotten more into craft beers because of you. His name is Chris and he means the world today. Hope you have a great day. Absolutely, Chris and Monica, consider yourself shouted out. And absolutely, congratulations, July 25th. Matrimony and all that good stuff happening. But absolutely, yes, Chris, keep up the good work. Stay tobacco free. And, uh, and thank you, obviously, so much for the support and for watching the vlogs. Consider yourselves shouted out. I hope, uh, hope you got some good beer as a wedding gift. That would be like the ultimate wedding gift is just good beer. Uh, th this is a shout out from, uh, the email just says Mr. Guy. <laughs> So he starts off and he says, Hi Nick, I know you probably get at least 14 bazillion emails a week requesting shout outs, so I don't expect much of this. I have a couple of shout outs that I would like you to give to some friends of mine and my lovely girlfriend. Uh, I would love for you to shout out my best friends, Brent, Clayton, and David. Absolutely. Fist bumps all around. They recently launched a new uh, e-juice line and they have just started getting into stores. They work their asses off to make this a reality and they have done everything right. They're based here in Orange County, California <coughs> and are super industrious. I don't know what that means. They're titans of industry. They have done much more for me uh, and the vaping. They have done so much for me and the vaping community as a whole. They recently asked me to take over their Instagram account, and I thought to myself that was the least I could do for them to help them out. Absolutely. Consider yourself shouted out. All of you guys. Brent, Clayton, David, absolutely. Also, my lovely girlfriend Karen has been a tremendous help for me. She's an amazing woman and the biggest reason that I've been able to stay away from cigarettes. I was a pack a day smoker for several years and right before the new year, I couldn't. I knew I couldn't do it anymore. She has stuck by me every step of the way and has been an amazing part of my life. Sorry that it's getting kind of gushy. I don't, uh, I don't mind gushy. I, uh, I love gushy. She's a fantastic person and I love her dearly and she deserves a shout out too. Karen, you are shouted out. Anyway, sorry for the super long email. All good. Uh, thank you for reading. And as always, let's keep on vaping. Roll credits. Absolutely. Andy, Brent, Clayton, David, and Karen. You are all shouted out for all being uh, particularly spectacular people. Uh, I got one more for you here. One last shout out. Uh, hey, Nick. Uh, my name is Cody. I know you're very busy. Whoops. I opened up the wrong window. I know you're very busy and it's hard to get everyone covered, but no big deal. If you can, I wanted to see if you could give my fiance a shout out. Her name is Haley. She just graduated nursing school and has passed her Illinois RN boards, which is not easy. Uh, I, a long time ago, I dated a girl who was going through nursing school and it was a, it was a nightmare. Additionally, I know that V... <laughs> suck my mod matt and v the v in matt and v she just uh she just did a uh, similar thing in uh in montana or wyoming or new mexico or wherever they live i don't remember uh during her four years of school she has worked like 40 hours a week and supported me in creating my own youtube channel hams vape life 91 we watch all of your reviews and vlogs together every week and she refers to you what what and she refers to you as the hot guy that sounds like seth rogan Ah, I don't, I, you know, I get that Seth Rogen comparison a lot, <clears throat> and I don't, I don't see it. I don't, I don't, I don't see the Seth Rogen comparison. People, are, all the time, they compare me to two people. They say, Yo, you're kind of like Glenn Beck. And I'm like, ah, I don't really, I'm not super familiar with Glenn Beck, so I'm not going to say yes or no, I don't know, I'm not super familiar with Glenn Beck. And then people always say, you sound like Seth Rogen, or you look like Seth Rogen, or sound like Seth Rogen. Uh... I don't, I don't know. I don't see it. Anyway, 
Anyway, uh, it would mean the world to her, and I wanted to do something to show how much I appreciate how hard she has worked for our small family. Absolutely. Cody, consider yourself shouted out. Additionally, your fiance, Haley, consider yourself shouted out. Congratulations on getting through nursing school. Get out there and save some lives. Uh, let me do one last shout out just so I can get through one more. There was one more recent one that I wanted to do. There was one more recent one I wanted to do. Oh, just scrolling through shout out requests. All right, this one comes from Jen. Hi, Nick. I know you get these emails probably thousands of times a day. Not thousands of times a day. That was That's a little bit of an exaggeration. So I'll make mine short and sweet. My boyfriend, who used to be an occasional smoker, completely stopped after watching your videos. He completely adores slash looks up to you. He watches your videos daily, and he has started building his own RDAs. Uh, and fancy drinking of all kinds of different beer. Yes, that's the that's if there's two paths I can set people on. One of them is vaping. One of them is good beer. Since he started watching your videos, he's become so much happier, and he's gotten into va into the vaping world. And your videos being hilarious, he always shows me. He just looks up to you. Maybe uh, maybe start his own business to someday. Sorry, this is kind of long. But I could go on and on. I just wanted to say I appreciate what you do and you make a lot of people happy. I would love it if you could give him a shout out. Uh, even for a minute, it would make his whole month. His name is Ryan. Thank you for time taking the time to read this. Absolutely. Uh, consider yourself shouted out both Jen and Ryan. Ryan apparently is a much bigger fan than Jen is, and Jen has to uh, get shown all the funny parts in, in the vlog. And it's funny because this happens This happens at Vape Meets more than anything else. People will talk to me and say, God, I love your videos so much. Thank you for everything you do. I'm like, absolutely. You know, thank you so much. It's my pleasure. And we have these go back and forth. And then at every Vape Meet, without fail, a lot of this will happen. There's a guy and then a female. And I don't know if the female is wife, girlfriend, sister, something like that. Usually significant other. And the guy's like, I love your videos. I watch them all the time. My poor wife has to sit in bed while I'm sitting and watching your videos. And I'm always like, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm glad you like my videos. Thank you so much. I'm sorry that you have to sit there and just listen to my voice and me talk about a subject that you have no interest in. So it's it's good, Jen, that you support that you support Ryan here, and uh, absolutely consider yourselves uh, shouted out for the both of you. So we did some shout outs. We tasted beer. Uh, we did a lot of stuff. We talked about flying with vape gear. We talked about Calgary. We talked about some more SB140 stuff. And what I want to do now that we're really getting into this vlog, I have a lot of first impressions. All right, let's get into some of these first impressions. I got a lot of things. First thing that came in that I think is kind of amazing. So I had an I had one of those old Joy Tech e grips. And I never did a video for it. Uh, I ended up giving it to uh, a smoker friend, and they've been using it. But I got this newer Joytech eGrip called the eGrip OLED. I honestly don't know what the difference is. I went to the Joytech site. Yes, I'm over 18. Uh, so this is the eGrip OLED. It says... Uh, 8 to 30 watts, OLED screen presenting watts, volts, and ohms, shift between variable wattage and variable voltage mode, 360 degree regulation, ring to adjust output wattage, compact size, and attractive color. So evidently, this is kind of just the refresh. For those, for those with OLED screens whose wattage is 20 watts, they can be upgraded to 30 watts by continuously pressing the fire button 30 times in the device off condition. Continuously press the fire button 30 times, the, vo the device will automatically shift to 20 watts. So I noticed that it says it did 30 watts, and I keep clicking this, and it says, and my, it maxes out at 20 watts, which is fine. There's a little one ohm coil head in here. I have it set to 20 watts. It's giving me 4.4 volts. You fill it up here, right in that little hole, and then there's a little rubber a silicone uh, cover that covers up the juice filling holes. Uh, I haven't had it leak or anything. It contains the juice all on the inside. I don't know what the what the battery life of this is. Uh, it doesn't say what the battery life on it is. 
probably because all they have right now is launching news. They don't have any specifications. For more information about the OLED CL version and the CS version, what's the difference between the CL and the CS? I'm, this is all stuff I'm going to have to figure out. CL atomizer. I, I'm assuming that one of the atomizers, CL base or CS base, I'm assuming that is referring to airflow. Um, it seems like the CS is going to have a bigger airflow no they look the same oh yeah so the CS definitely has a bigger airflow hole and bigger uh, bigger juice flow in the coil head the coil head looks different. I'll post you a link in the description to where you can look at all this stuff but I took off their wonky long uh, drip tip and I put this tiny little silver drop dot mod drip tip on there look how tiny and cool this is This right now, as it stands, is definitely a mouth to lunger. Nice flavor, nice little vapor production. I mean, it's not blowing cloud comp clouds, but it's rad for traveling. This would be amazing. It's it's been fun. It's been really really fun. Let's try to do that. Uh, let's try to do that. Turn it up to thirty watts thing. So I'm gonna turn it off. So make sure it's off. So I have to press it thirty times. Thirty times. All right, here goes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirty, forty, fifty, six, seven, eight, nine, twenty, 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 it now goes up to 30 watts. Why did they have it do that? That's nice. That is nice. I don't necessarily want a full 30 watts, but like 22 or 23 watts would have been nice. Just a little bit more than what they were giving me. Okay, 23 watts. 23 watts, one ohm coil head, it's been rad. So yeah, that's the Joytech E-Grip <laughs> OLED CL. This is definitely the CL version of this. I don't know if they included the CS, but I'll have to look through the box. But I think they just included, this is the CL. This is the Joytech E-Grip OLED CL. So that's sort of a long name. Kind of going along similar lines like that. E-Leaf is, uh, e is in the temperature control game. So they sent out the iStick 40-watt uh, TC, temperature control. So it's a lot like the iStick 30-watt. It feels the same. It's got the same buttons and stuff here. It doesn't have that little lip. It's rounded and flat so that the tank that is provided fits on their flush. Now, the draw on this is weird. It's a little too loose to be a mouth to lung, but it's a little too tight to be a straight up lung. So what I've been doing is closing it off to the last little two holes. There's a little airflow adjustment here. Been closing it off to the last two holes. This is a nickel coil head in here. I have it set to 40 watts, 470 degrees. It's been pretty rad. It's honestly pretty rad. Let me try to open that airflow up. It's good. It's good. Uh, this flavor is... Uh, Mai from Lane Cove, so it's really it's it's a thicker juice. I feel like these juices are a little bit thicker. Um, the tank works like any other tank. You flip it upside down, you unscrew the base here, and you dump all your juice in there, and you've got a tiny little coil head, a little temperature control coil head that goes in uh, that goes in here. As it stands, uh, I can't take this tank apart. And I know I made that mistake with the Arctic. It did come apart. This one, as far as I can tell, does not not, not come apart. I'm going to get out my rubber pliers. I'm going to try to get it apart. But for some reason, I just don't think this comes apart at all. 
It's been a good experience with nickel. Generally, nickel's been weird. I've been having really weird, really weird times, really weird experiences with nickel. I built a, a single nickel coil in this scrape. Came out to 1.6 ohms, 470 degrees, 49 watts on the Evic VT, and it's just weird. I feel like it's not giving me, it's just not giving me what I want. It's not what I want in a vape is that weird nickel. It gives me a little burst of flavor at the beginning and then it trails off really fast. And that could be that the wicking's not keeping up and so it's dropping the temperature. I'm not quite sure what's going on. But this, this little thing with the nickel coil head in there, you can switch it back and forth from temperature to non-temperature mode, I believe. Yeah, you can have it just be regular 40 watts as well by pressing and holding down this little middle button right here. 40 watts, and now it's in temperature mode. Very, very simple, very straightforward. You switch it back and forth from temperature mode when you're not using it. It's a... Uh, Super compact little device, super compact. Look how super compact that is. Look at that little tank on there. It's a nice little uh, temperature control device if you're not, uh, you know, if you have never gotten into, into temperature control or whatnot. So I got another China product here. This one is comes from Inokin. So this is the Disruptor, the Inokin Disruptor. Look at that, look how cool that looks. Little two-tone thing going on right there variable wattage up to 40 watts i believe let's I ju like this literally like i just got it oh that's right the buttons are reversed no variable wattage up to 50 up to 50 watts so i'm going to put this back down to 37 watts where i had it and it can i sub on there 37 watts 4.0.47 ohm coil head it's giving me 4.2 volts Really, really nice. This is a great vape. So what's what's the deal with this disruptor? It looks like it looks like what the MVP version three should have been. They should have just called this the MVP version three. Um, it has these battery cells, okay, that you pop off. You see how this is happening? Just like that. So this is actually the mod with the components in it, and then this is just a battery and you charge this separately via USB, or you charge it when it's on there via USB. And the mod itself has these little rails on the side that match the rails on the battery. So once you get it on there, it just slides up and down. It doesn't, it can hold itself on there on these little rails. And then there's a little magnet. So when it gets to the bottom, it kind of pulls itself into place and you just press it down and it stays on there. And then you one, two, three, turn it on you get Inokin technology so let's say this battery's dying I'm gonna pop this off of here I'm gonna go put this on the USB charger I'm gonna go in my drawer I'm gonna get my other battery I'm gonna put it on here and now I have a black and pink mod same mod different battery on there now the top and bottoms look kind of weird. There's a lot of screws. You see screws on the top, screws on the bottom. I, I, I think this is a cool little technology. It's a nice size, nice? Why, who says nice? It's a nice size box. And it's not, I don't know, it's not really a box. I mean, I guess, yes, when it's all together, it's a box. But this is this weird rectangle mod part that's useless without the battery. And the battery is this weird rectangle battery. And they go together. They just slide together. And it, like I said, holds on there. There's a little magnet that kind of pulls it down. Press it on. One, two, three you're good to vape up to 50 watts. Now, I don't know the milliamp hour of these batteries, so we're gonna go to the Inokin site, 
Inakin Disruptor. Inakin Disruptor is the latest high-powered advanced personal vaporizer, and it is the first to utilize Inakin's revolutionary InnoCell vaping power system. Safety is at the forefront of Inakin's vision for a better future and e-cigarette. Battery and charging safety will continue to be one of the most important issues facing the international vaping industry. They kind of just go on and on here uh, about how it is, and I'm trying to just get to the specs. It says... With a lifespan more than 300 charge and discharge cycles, at least 30% more than a standard 18650. 2000 Ma. The, Inno, the InnoCell will initially be available in 2000 Ma version and other caper capacities with larger packs planned for the future are compatible with the InnoKin slide and click system. This is great. I never thought about that, but this is great. That means that they could release one that's double the size, right? They could release one that's like a big 4,000 mAh battery, and then when you stick it on here, you end up with a box mod that's like this big. And that's not even, that's not even really that big. Like holding it like this, that would be cool. As it stands, this is cool. This is just cool sometimes there's vape products and you're like that that is cool this is one of those things that is just cool i guess it helps to turn it on i've been getting along great with this inno cell technology i'm gonna put the pink battery back in my drawer i'm gonna put the uh blue battery back on here. Um, Inakin did send two extra kits to give away. So add that on to the list of things that yes, I need to give away. I usually run contests on Instagram or Facebook or social media. I'm trying to put together something for YouTube. In fact, my last contest was actually done uh, through YouTube. So we'll probably what we'll probably do is another one of those big cool boxes uh, I'll just throw a bunch of shit in there an Inokin a couple of tanks maybe a mech mod maybe an evic VT some juice throw it all together in one big package and have a contest and send it out that way but as it stands yes I have been uh, I have been enjoying this just because it's so cool oh I, I switched the battery that's why that's why that happened All right, well, I, get, I better get through this because I have one more, I have two more first impressions to do and then we have to do retro vaping and I still want to try to do viewer mail. So, mech mods. I've been on a tubular mech mod kick lately. This right here with some juice on it, this is the rig version two, substantially smaller than the rig version one, substantially easier button to use than the rig V1. It's all engraved there on the bottom, American made. Copper contacts, hybrid top cap, and thankfully it came with this little tool. This little tool that you're supposed to keep on your keychain. It's this little thing. You keep it on your keychain, and that is for taking on and off that hybrid connection. So you can put it on your atomizer and kind of crank it down on there good, and then this screws into the body of the device and it makes it for a little bit slimmer of a profile. Some atomizers like uh, Freak Show, Mad Hatter, Kennedy, maybe the Kennedy, maybe the Kennedy will have airflow issues. As it stands, it goes down into the atomizer about a millimeter, I suppose, but uh, it's been hitting great. I actually got some new Samsung 25R batteries and uh, they have been working just fantastic. This is the Imp Atomizer with a lovely, lovely top cap, uh, double helix designs. Miss Jess Marie made that and I, it's just one of my favorite things, uh, forget about it, of all time. I'll post the link in the description to where you can check those out as well. The, oh. The thing just hits hard, and it might be a combination of, I got a fresh build on here, I got a fresh Samsung 25R battery in here, it's just fantastic. There's been a lot of mech mods coming out recently that have made me really want to use mech mods again, like tubular mech mods. They've just performed great. In fact, when I went up, to, went up to Local Vape for the Vape Capital Cloud Comp, all I brought with me was my tugboat mech mod, not the box, the tube, and it was, it's been fantastic.
it just it just hits really hard. Um, I have a stainless steel version of this. One thing that I obviously don't like is the uh, laser etching on here, or however, however he put that rig on there. To the touch, it is just horrible. To be fair, it's been slowly getting better the more I use it, but at first, oh man, that touch. I, you know how I am. I'm a textural person. I like to touch and feel and grow, and nope, that's creepy. I like to touch and feel, but this, eh, ugh. Oh God, why do I keep touching it? I just don't like the way it feels. But the goddamn thing, the thing hits hard. It hits hard. Rig V2. I'm not sure how much those are going for. I think I have their website pulled up here. Let's see. Vaping American Made Products. Uh, the website is vapeamp.com. I'll post a link in the description. Uh, he still has the Rig Mod version 1 up there. The Roughneck. He's going to do He's gonna do a... Uh, a rig version 2 roughneck as well now the roughneck was an atomizer that was made just for the rig mod so it had that like flush hybrid look to it uh where was the res the rig version 2 yes i want to see more about the rig version 2 tell me tell me uh so it looks oh special edition black oh that's cool oh that's the rig v1 oh man thought that was the rig v2 so the rig v2 comes in stainless steel brass and copper 130 bucks for the stainless steel 150 for the copper 140 for the brass and now he gave me a stainless steel one that i've been digging using he also gave me a copper one i don't know wow it got really bright in here all of a sudden why is this happening i need to adjust my lighting better or worse I think it's better so he gave me a copper one uh, I'm gonna end up giving the copper one away I do want to use it a little bit but I am gonna uh, eventually give it away maybe we'll throw it in that big uh, that big giveaway package but yeah 150 bucks stainless steel I hate this I hate this engraving I still hate it but the damn thing hits so hard that I could care less good lord Good Lord, it's just been hitting hard. All right, last first impression. Let's wrap this up before we get to any retro vaping, which is going to be, oh, just so exciting. This, vape like they're watching. Mm. It's, a, it's a dual 18650 sub-ohm box mod. Double 18650s in there. It's running in parallel which means you can put those low builds on there it's got a little voltage readout that shows you the voltage you're getting whoops that was upside down okay 3.6 volts i'm currently rocking this with the k's rda from beyond vape the cloud kicker society atomizer that i will be redoing a review on uh, hopefully very shortly but so far this has been pretty rad Keeping in mind, this isn't like a cloud chasing atomizer. This is a flavor atomizer. But this is called the sub ohm box, and the people who make the sub ohm cell make the sub ohm box. And I'll post a link in the description. The, the only thing I can find is their Instagram, which is Instagram slash sub ohm box, and they have three pictures on it. One of them's mine. So I feel like they're just kind of starting out. I'll post a link in the description to subohmcell.com where they may be selling them in the future, but as it stands, I don't know where this comes from. It comes, I mean, I know where it comes from. I don't know who sells it, and I don't know how much it will cost. It's got this rounded button on here. I've never seen a button like this. It's like a bigger version of these little clicky tactile buttons. It's it's like a it's like a clickier version of that. Um, it's black. It's flat. It's rounded on one side. It's got this cool graphic vape like they're watching on it. I just think that looks. I just think that looks cool. My one gripe right now with this, I ran into some battery issues, and I'll touch on this in the review because I want to verify my findings first, but I think I'm having some battery issues with this. I, it does charge with the USB in the bottom. I don't like this stripe. I don't like this stripe. 
It's engraved into the aluminum. It's a deeply engraved stripe that goes all the way around the mod. And you can see it. It's like a rut. I don't like touching it. It feels uncomfortable and sharp. They need to get rid of that as soon as humanly possible. That stripe on there doesn't even look that cool. And it feels awful. It just feels awful. I can feel it like against my fingerprints. I just don't like touching it. I love using this mod. I just don't like touching it. It's nice. It's been really nice. Uh, this has kind of been my go-to box lately. This and the tugboat box have been fantastic. And of course, I love playing around with your mom's box. I like boxes and it's funny because this arrived and I'm like, fuck yeah, sub on box. Fuck yeah, double 18650 parallel. I love this thing. I'm just gonna use it, use it, use it, use it, use it. And then I'm like setting it aside so that I can think, use things like the Limitless or the Tugboat or the Roughneck. I find myself wanting to use tube mods. I wonder if I could hit all these at the same time. No, it's not gonna happen and that just looked gross. I find myself wanting to use tube mech mods again. I just like them. I miss that form factor. I love boxes. I just miss I just miss tube mech mods. But yeah, so <coughs> that that will wrap up the first impressions. Uh hope you enjoyed it. What should we do now? Ooh, maybe we should do some retro vaping. Right, so let's do some retro vaping. So uh, since I've started this retro vaping segment, I've vaped all sorts of old things. I haven't really touched on stick little stick batteries because, eh, that's people still. They're still those are still being sold. It's kind of like a, a thing. What I <coughs> what I want to do with retro vaping is talk about my retro vaping, the things that I used to vape on. So during what I would call the dark ages of vaping. We had Clearomizers. Does anybody remember Clearomizers? And I tried, man. I tried to love Clearomizers. Clearomizers are still being sold. And unfortunately, a lot of shops are still using Clearomizers as their way to taste liquid, which, blech, why would you do that? So, what I did is I, where's my other tweezers? I scavenged through my I scavenged through my tackle box and I found this old iClear 16 from Inakin. And these probably helped a lot of people get off of cigarettes. And as soon as they found something better, these got ditched like you can't imagine. There's not anybody that I know or have ever talked to that still rock like these traditional ego style clearomizers. Um, so what I did is I got some juice right here. I got some old school, this is some Mass Teller Mint from Namber Juice. 18 milligrams, son. 18, can you see it on there? 18 milligram Mass Teller Mint. So what I'm gonna do is fill this up. Uh, oh shit, I don't have anything with a ego connection on it. So. I bet I have an Ego adapter around here somewhere. I will vape on this. So what I'm going to do before I find that Ego connection is I'm going to fill this up with liquid. Now this utilizes, this is a dual coil and it, uses, it utilizes silica wick, which if you remember silica, we, we used to build with silica. I used to build with silica. Seems like that's all wet in there. I'm gonna fill this up. I'm gonna let this sit for about two days. Now I just wanna rotate it here. I'm gonna try to get all the wicks nice and wet. But there's silica wicks in there. I filled it up with 18 milligram juice. 18 milligram juice. And the draw on this 
tough. That is a tough draw on there. Uh, I think I have an ego connection in here, which I do. I'm actually just going to put this on that Inokin Disruptor because I have a, a little uh, ego connector that I think uh, came from... Oh, I'm sorry, Brian. I'll have to call you back. I have a little ego connector here that I believe came from E-Leaf. I'm going to plug that onto my disruptor right there. It says check atomizer, so let's plug this on and see if it works. Yep, it's, uh, it's reading the coil on there. It's two ohms. This is a two ohm coil, so I'm going to pop this wattage way down. I'm going to pop this wattage down to like 12 watts. Oh, no, that's up. Why does the Inokin Disruptor do that? The Inokin Disruptor is weird because it's backwards. The up is the, or the, the, the down wattage is the higher button, and the up wattage is the lower button, which doesn't make any sense. It seems like they should be switched, but that's just me. Um, let's hope that there's some juice in there. I'm terrified. I am terrified of this Clearomizer because Clearomizers are notorious for dry hits. Just dry hits. Back in the day, my number one email was, why is my pro tank burning? Why is my Clearomizer burning? Why am I getting these dry hits? Why does it taste like burnt nasty chemicals? It's because it's silica wicks in there and it's because the juice can't keep up. Now I'm hoping that this is a 50-50 juice I'm hoping that it will be able to wick just a little bit. <sighs> Still terrified. Still terrified. What 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 voltage was that? 4.9 volts. Okay. Okay. Holy cow. 18 milligram juice. I can't believe I used to vape this. Does anybody buy 18 milligram juice anymore? Let me know, comment below what nick level you vape because uh, 18 is, uh, is very, very strong. As a smoker, I could see this being just fucking cool though. Oh, I missed that throat hit. Good Lord. We vape so much differently now than we used to, don't we? Everything's different in clouds. And then I go back to this tiny little clearomizer with 18 milligram juice and it's like, it's like getting punched. It's like getting punched in the back of your throat. Oh my gosh. That throat hit though. Uh, that's what I used to love. I used to be after that throat hit. I remember very vividly right before the very first vape fest this is going back to 2010 i remember i ordered pure smoker blueberry juice and the throat hit was exactly what i wanted i was dripping in a 510 atomizer at six volts mouth to lung and that that throat hit of when you inhale oh i just loved it it's what it's honestly what that's the one thing that helped me get away from cigarettes was that that intense throat hit that you felt when i felt that i felt satisfied i felt like yeah i'm getting my nicotine and it tastes like blueberries holy crap i might keep this clearomizer around with that 18 milligram juice boy Yes, yes. If nothing else, this retro vaping couldn't even be about the clearomizer. It could be about this 18 milligram juice that is just making me remember what it's like to quit smoking with a clearomizer. Now, these clearomizers, they weren't awful, but they were pretty bad. Like I said, they helped a lot of people get off of cigarettes, but as soon as people found something slightly better, then these clear misers got ditched. I know. I know there are three and four year vapors out there that probably have a stash of these clear misers. The iClear 16s, maybe next week we'll jump into the iClear 30s. Crazy. It is crazy. I can't believe that it still works. 
first of all. I can't believe that it works. And it's not as bad as I remember it. Mm. That throat hit, though. Holy crap. That throat hit is insane. Insane throat hit. Thank you, Clearomizers, for getting so many people off of cigarettes. And thank you, everything else, for being so much better than Clearomizers. I would rather rock this tank right now. This tank may not get a first impression. This is the sauce code. And I am a big fan. But yeah, there we go. That was some retro vaping. We vaped on a clearomizer. Wasn't that just thrilling? Wasn't that just fun? So what do we have to do next? Uh, I have a feeling this vlog is already running way too long, but there is probably a viewer mail that I do need to get to. Viewer mail. All right, I'm going to wrap this up with two, count them, one, two viewer mails. The first one comes from a fella named Nick who says, I've been wanting to get a parallel box mod with all the options available out there. I just don't know which one I should get. I'm kind of on a vape budget, vape budget hands, and I wanted to get something that's going to hold up to the test of time at a decent price, 40 to $70. I don't know of any parallel box mods that are in the 40 to $70 range. What I can recommend to you, let's go over to here. Let's go over to Lab Rat Liquids. Uh, they sell one of my favorite parallel box mods of all time called the Titan. And it's just fantastic. I will have a review for it very, very soon. It's $120, okay? I get that you're on a budget, but you don't just want to go buy a $40 parallel box mod. What I would do if I were you, Nick, is I would just save up. If you have something that's working and vaping for you now, then just continue to use that. Save up 40 bucks a month and then go get a good parallel box mod. In addition to the Titan from Labret Liquids, I'll post a link to that in the description, there is the tugboat box mod that I I have been I've been having a really good time with it. Uh, it's no, it's not the OKR10. It's the uh, unregulated one. They have an unregulated box mod. They make the tugboat version of the Hexome version two. No, that's not what I'm looking for. Tug Life unregulated box mod, ninety seven dollars. Ninety seven dollars. Your limit was seventy dollars. This is seventeen fifty more than that. Seventy. Twenty seven fifty more than that. So save up an extra twenty seven dollars and fifty cents and uh, you'll be able to get a Tug Life unregulated box mod. If you're gonna get a box mod, get a good box mod. Don't get a junky forty dollar uh, box mod. Hope that helps out, Nick. Uh, the last uh, email I have, now that I can't find it, yes, Eric. Uh, Eric writes to me, uh, says he likes the videos. He says, I've been vaping for over a year now, cigarette smoker for eight years, uh, quit within the last two months of starting e-cigs. If you don't mind, I'd like you to share your thoughts on steeping e-juices. I'm currently making my second batch of home juice, and I was wondering what you slash Namberduce do uh, by the way, I love mom's pineapple cake for steeping juices before you vape them. Um, thanks for taking the time to read and respond. Uh, in my opinion, you don't need to steep juice more than a couple days. Um, after that, it's, it's good to go. Juices will steep faster when they're exposed to warmth as well as oxygen. So if you want to steep your juices, Take the top off, put it somewhere where an animal or child can't get to it, and just leave it there. Leave it in your cupboard for a couple days, you'll be good to go. Everything that Namber ships is obviously pre-steeped um, and are good to vape right away. Uh, when we're doing testing, we test it. I test, I test juices as they steep. So I'll taste it fresh, keep tasting it, keep tasting it over the course of a week. So it, while it steeps and you look at things like how it's changing color, if it's getting too dark, if it's gonna gunk up your coils, things like that. Juice is gonna steep whether you want it to or not. So even if you got a bottle of juice and you're like, hey, this looks cool, I'm just gonna start vaping it. It will steep as you vape it. 
It's going to steep whether you want it to or not. And steeping is, is, it's a terminology that we just made up. It's like, it's, you might as well call it aging a juice. Uh, steeping is just something that we made up to call a juice, the, the process that's happening when it goes from brand new to a couple days old and looks really dark. And there's tons of examples of this, tons of pictures of this all over the internet of people posting on Reddit and Facebook where they have one juice bottle that's brand new and one that's like two weeks old and one of them's darker and they're like, oh, guys, what's going on with my juice? Is this still safe to vape? Yes, steeping happens again whether you want it to or not happens quicker with more nicotine in the juices 18 milligram stuff 12 milligram stuff is gonna get darker and zero three and six stuff you might not even notice a huge change in it you might not even notice a huge change in the flavor couple days couple days eric is all you need that's all i'm gonna do for me viewer mail i apologize i just don't want this vlog to run far too long Keep in mind that this month is going to be weird. Before, during, and after VaporCon West, my videos are gonna be scarce. I won't have a vlog for two weeks in a row due to VaporCon West and my mom's birthday, so that's something that you're just gonna to have to deal with. Um, I have no way to change that. I have no way to change that at all. But in the coming months, I do have a lot of cool stuff coming up. I'm actually not accepting anything from anybody until I get caught up. I'm not accepting any hardware, not accepting any juice, not accepting anything until I can get caught up on the things that I already have. Uh, I am easily booked out for the next three months on videos. It'll probably be about another month and a half before I'm even willing to try or test out or receive a new mod. I just need to get through the things that I have and I need to just sit and enjoy vaping uh, and not have it be, you know, this this burden <laughs> that it seems to have uh, have become. But that's what I got. Thank you so much, everybody, for sticking in there. Got a lot of very cool stuff coming up. Hope to see you guys at VaporCon West. I think it's going to be a really fun time. What am I going to grab? Let's do some retro vaping. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. And as always, let's keep on vaping. All right, everybody, thank you so much for watching. And if you like this vlog video, you might enjoy my weekly review series. I'll have them linked down below. Mech Mod Monday, Topper Tuesday, and Wild Card Wednesday. And as always, feedback, likes, comments, and subscriptions are always appreciated. Thanks so much, everybody.